Now you'll have noticed a lot of head-to-head -head videos on the channel of late, and I'm not too sure who they're exactly for the benefit for you or for me. What an iron this is. I say that because in recent weeks, there have been irons released that have really appealed to me. And today I'm gonna to look at two of those which uh, have got me very confused as to where I wanna go with my own personal bag setup. And you might be having a similar dilemma. And in this video, the two irons that I'm putting in a head to head are the Titleist T150 and the new PXG 0317T. Now, those irons have caused me a dilemma because they are very much in a player's profile, very small and compact, but very playable, very forgiving, fast ball speeds off the club face, a little bit of compensation for off centre hits and tick all the other parameters in terms of dry ball data. It's not what I expected from this style of iron. I am astonished as to what has gone on in terms of the performance of these small and compact irons that I love to play, but always steer away from them purely because one, first of all, the manufacturer tells me that they're aimed at a better player. And the second reason being, I am just too scared to make a move away from an iron that fits into my category of player. And am I gonna lose bundles of forgiveness? And what I'm seeing and what Trackman's telling me is that may be not the case. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is do a simple head to head and I've played with both these irons on the course. We've only got seven iron, unfortunately, to do the comparison with. Um, out on course, I am seeing all the kind of things that I like. They both feel superb, they both look really good. What is Trackman gonna tell me in terms of how do they differ in terms of performance? Well, whilst I continue to collect some data this morning with this morning's swing, I always like to record fresh data. Um, the club I'm hitting right now is the Titleist, the T150. I'm just gonna put some visuals up on screen. I love how clean this is. I love the T-Series lineup from Titleist. I actually borrowed this club to somebody uh, to try out and they sort of came back and said it didn't really do anything different than what is out there right now. So I always remember this is a very subjective opinion. I would really sort of contradict that because I think first of all, or first and foremost, it's a player's iron with bundles of forgiveness. And I'm not sure any exist that are quite so forgiving, look so good and feel so good. Oh, that was off the bottom grooves and. And maybe, you know, a typical example of where not a great strike, that ball is still in the air and doing its thing. Love the fact, a great demonstration of what that forgiveness element looks like. Maybe more importantly, feels like. It was definitely bottom grooves. Again, not the best strike, but the ball is flying out there. Not too dissimilar where both of those landed either. So bundles of forgiveness. Let's have a look at the other iron in question, which is that PXG 0317T. Now, before we go on to hit the PXG iron, I just want to take a quick look at them at address and I very much put them in the same category, like I said, but I will say that T150 is probably, well, no, it is more compact and a narrower top line. And overall just seems that little bit more of a smaller profile. So that's interesting because I would very much have assume from memory trying them that uh, they were very similar in size so slightly more compact but definitely you know minimal offset players iron type of head make sure i've got seven iron in hand right brief interruption there from ian who uh, amongst other things keeps this range in absolutely incredible condition as well as this room but that driving range alongside me with top tracer unreal well done ian what a job you do in there anyway back to the PXG iron um, just really sort of floats my boat a hollow bodied iron polymer injected plenty of forgiveness and the ball just seems to fire off it now quick mention for all those people who get concerned about this different shafts in each of the irons um, the shaft that I've got um, in 
uh, in the PXG iron is a steel fiber, it's been 95 gram stiff. Um, the, and I can't remember what we've got in this, I think it's a Dynamic Gold or Project X uh, stiff 115. So big difference in the weight. Um, however, what I will say is I've got uh, an additional weight placed in the back here. Something you can do with PXG irons is in the custom fit process, that element in the back can be uh, changed to suit what you like to feel. So I know that I have a heavier weight, a considerably heavier weight than standard. And oddly enough, these very much feel like the heavier iron, although the shaft itself is a lot lighter. Anyway, what are they doing? Well, the big thing is, and I don't know whether I say this on virtually every video, because I never know you can pick it up. You have to take my word for it. Um, they sort of feel and sound very, very similar to me. And again, that's a big key part of why I like both sets of irons. They've done an incredible job in that acoustic department. And to be honest with you, I really, in terms of visually, can't separate them in terms of performance. I've only got, like I said, a seven iron in hand. The launch angle seems similar. Uh, carry distance, I'm not so sure. I've been swinging a ball, uh, the club rather pretty well this morning, a bit different from yesterday. It's funny how we change and my club head speed is up a little bit. I'm expecting to see a little bit further carry numbers than what we had on a video that I filmed yesterday. But will it one more? Ah, just so, so good. Both irons, I really just need to know what separates them in terms of that Trackman data because I'm as interested or probably more interested actually than you are. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf, and of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below, and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Well, as I always say, the, the Trackman always tells you exactly what is happening, irrelevant to what you think you're seeing. And there's probably, uh, there's definitely a difference between these two clubs in terms of performance. There's no doubt about that. Probably more shocked than I thought. Um, what should we do? We'll go and put the averages of both on screen, but then I'm gonna put the uh, individual shots up because there's a story in there as well. Now, interestingly enough, first of all, you see the club head speed with the PXG iron was quicker, um, and a couple of mile an hour quicker than that of the tight list. However, the ball speed off the tight list was quicker. That's the first shock. So from a, and I never normally put this up, you'll see an end column there, which is smash factor. And you'll can see that the kind of, um, in terms of performance, optimized performance that is, then the seven iron from the tight list was fantastic in terms of club head speed versus ball speed. But then there's a negative on the, tightest iron whereas the spin is low it's not really low because like for me because it's something again that i i don't create a great deal of spin and always in around that sort of 5000 res with a seven iron is sort of where i'd want to be but that was a bit of a shock um so four six spin as opposed to 5000 on the pxg neither of them fantastic and a bit surprising we've got a 158 carry versus a 163 carry longer being a tight list um, and I think that's a lot to do with the fact that the launch angle on both is very similar but that spin number will just get that PXG ball just riding a little bit rising a little bit uh, but peak height again very very similar also very similar almost identical and the land angle almost identical I mean it's really really interesting i'm going to throw up first of all the pxg the sort of five shots that i hit and just have a little bit of a look across the board there um you'll see there was some really great spin numbers two affected it significantly two in the low four thousands uh, other than that we're sort of where we'd want to be in that high five and a half to six thousand revs then you've got that carry distance very consistent bar one shot so we got that 154 which is a real dropout and again affected things and that's why i'm showing you this there's always anomalies within numbers that you can sort of explain and understand where these figures come from um, and then again with the launch angle pretty high launching ball in my opinion but there was a couple in there that 17 launch which brought it down again um, 
the same again tightest numbers up on screen for you now the one surprising thing like i said was this was this low spin uh, if i'm honest with you i you know there's an element that i sort of question i always do i'm afraid because i've never played on a golf course where i've hit a seven iron into a green and had a problem stopping it so to me that's a real gray area i've always disputed that fact but anyway it is what it is that's what you can see there surprisingly low numbers what it's coming out with um that carry distance again Perhaps more of a spread from 157 up to 169. That could be, again, the fact that, you know, is it as consistent with off-center strikes? I have no idea. That suggests there's a little bit of drop-off between the two. The launch of the ball remained very consistent, uh, apart from one shot, uh, as did everything else. I mean, I think that... If I was in a custom fit situation and I tried both irons, then from a numbers perspective, the seven iron from the Titleist T150 would, I'd say would, that spin number, you know, would concern me because I'm led to believe that's such an issue. And I would maybe, if it wasn't for that number, I'd be all out on the T150s in terms of the data parameters. Having tried them both on course, I'm not really seeing that spin number being an issue. So then you led down the route of just what you're preferring in terms of feel, sound, and all those other things, looks, aesthetics, and a lot of it. It's really, really tough. I said that somebody had borrowed this iron and said there was nothing fantastic going on with it. I disagree. I think that being the T150, I think it's an exceptional iron. And you know these two are without doubt um, the best players type irons that are on the market right now, in my opinion, very hard to split. If anything, after today's testing, I would lean towards that T150. I will go out on the course and try a little bit more, and I'd love to have a longer iron as well to test in that T150 to see if I can handle that iron in the longer end of the bag. Anyway, as ever, very subjective. You can see from the numbers, there's always variables in there. Make of it what you will, and uh, good luck if you decide to do this test yourself, and I hope you come out with the right decision. Right, thanks for watching, as ever. I'll see you all soon.